Welcome to I Am Sounding English. Hello, my name is Pip and I've designed these resources so that you are on the way to improving your English and getting you better understood. This is the first in a series about how to improve pronunciation naturally when inquiring English. The aim is to basically maintain fluency while altering pronunciation so that you can understand others and others can understand you better. It would also help in aspects like test taking with improvement in listening skills, vocabulary recall, and clearer structuring of answers in verbal and written responses, just to name but a few. But basically, I want you to be able to communicate to others more naturally and confidently. And I'm going to focus on three points uh, on the challenges faced by the educator, the importance of pronunciation and the introduction of the framework timed paired practice to improve fluency. So when we think about our English courses as a student or a teacher, we focus on things such as four skills, academic English, presentational skills, examination skills with TOEIC or TOEFL, for example, or even content-based skills where you're learning a subject in English. But one thing they all have in common is pronunciation, whether it be clearer listening or actual production. We need to be producing so that we can be understood. Um, so do we have any ideas about how to improve our pronunciation? Well, first thing I've noticed is that to improve pronunciation, it's also important to improve fluency. After all, if you're not fluent, how can you get the students to sound more natural? A way I would suggest to do this is through the framework called the timed paired practice, which I have found really useful in trying to encourage students to speak, as well as how to alter their sound production. Now, how are you gonna teach pronunciation? It's a simple question, but it's not easy. Um, it is one of the most difficult skills to learn or teach in the English language really is. And the second thing for teachers is that with limited time in the classroom, teachers have to focus on what they consider as being more important. And often the case, it will be grammar and vocabulary. Now, as a result, um, you'll find that pronunciation is neglected and it is difficult to teach. Teachers generally have had very little training overall and so are understandably lacking in confidence in trying to teach it in the classroom. There are no clear guidelines I found uh, to teach pronunciation carefully and um, also it contradicts other possible um, purposes in the classroom. So for example, examinations and building up vocabulary. Um, there is no well established systematic way of deciding what aspects of pronunciation to teach, when to teach it, and how to do it effectively. And if we look at research, we'll find that there are papers available um, on controlled experimental studies, but you'll find that pronunciation on teaching being limited and learning um, being, I would say, mm, not sufficient to improve pronunciation as such. So we need to address production and perception of English sounds. That is the bottom line. The reason why, well, poor pronunciation is the main cause of communication breakdowns or misunderstandings in the classroom when we interact. That has been researched. And so we need to think of a way in getting students to give it a go in how to produce language that makes sense for others to understand. If we look at the IELTS bands descriptors, for example, we can see how important it is uh, to focus on pronunciation. When we look at these bands, it looks at uh, fluency, uh, vocabulary, grammar, as well as pronunciation. But all these are connected. If you cannot pronounce clearly, it does affect your fluency. Also, if you cannot pronounce particular words carefully, it does affect your vocabulary and even your grammar as well when you're looking at contractions. So it is important uh, that pronunciation is an aspect that's concentrated on in the classroom as well as grammar, vocabulary, and fluency. So what you need to do is to get your students talking to each other, but most importantly, independently, not following what the teacher always says or what is written in the course book. But trying to get students to talk out is challenging. Now I teach in Japan and I've, 
found that students do find it difficult to speak out um, for a series of reasons. One is because of different expectations. Um, other aspects would be about trying to maintain harmonious relationships within the class, um, losing face if you've made mistakes, or feeling embarrassed because you're standing out because you know better than the others, and also falling short of what's expected from you by others. So this is just to name but a few. But at the same time, we need to get the students to produce language so that we can work on fluency and pronunciation. But we need something to work with. Now, what to work with? Well, basically, it's the nuts and bolts of the conversation. It's talking, but talking in English. Now, it sounds quite strange, but despite students spending years learning English, we still need to reorientate them so they're actually producing language rather than just studying for tests, for example. And so the time paired practice would be something I would suggest using in your class. And it's really easy to um, add to your class. You basically need to get the students to ask 10 to 20 questions on a topic chosen by themselves or even from the text that you've been using. And the idea being that students are moving away from general generic ideas and focusing more on uh, aspects that interest them. So it becomes more interesting and more motivational. The students will then ask each other questions in their pairs. Um, that way uh, they're starting to use the language. Um, then afterwards they practice with another pair again to work on fluency, start to experiment with the language more and hopefully improving their confidence. And you can do it again and again as you see fit until there's sufficient practice in which the students feel reasonably prepared to start to talk to another student without looking at the notes. And then this will be the testing stage where you would choose two students at random to talk about the topic. The reason why it's at random is so that no two students can prepare a dialogue as such and learn from heart. And so what happens is your time to see how long they speak for and students have had the pleasure of understanding what other students strategies are to maintain conversation and start to see where mistakes are being made so they can start to apply this or try to avoid making the same mistakes in their own conversations as such. And so in a classroom, for example, of 20, 30 students, I would put them to groups of four and then they will practice once. And then again, a second time and even a third time. And this is without students having to move and disrupt other students. And this can be done in the classroom quite easily. And then once this has been done, what the next stage is to we start again. But let me give an example how it's used. So if we look here, this is asking students to um, focus on a topic. And so, for example, I'll ask students to choose a topic and this one will be focusing on hobbies. Okay, and so I'll ask the students to write down 10 questions about it. And the students will then ask each other the questions in their practices and then the teacher will check to see what's going on. And the idea is you want the students to basically create questions, stretch ideas and engage in the conversation. Now, what you'll find when you observe one pair, okay, you will stop the conversation if there's pausing, if there's a grammatical inaccuracy, or there's a comprehension issue. Okay, it's that simple. So students know um, what they're being tested for. And the other students will be listening to see what mistakes have been made and strategies being used. So they are carefully observing what's going on as well. Now, the advantages of using time pair practice is simple. First of all, um, it um, allows an observation to take place uh, on how language is produced, and, and you can see how it improves intelligibility and comprehensibility as well. Students will be better equipped to converse in their second language, which will hopefully improve proficiency as they develop their language and strategies, and it improves motivation, listening, and speaking skills and also their confidence. So there are obvious benefits from using it. So just to recap, time pair practice definitely helps you understand better grammatical issues, 
allow students to build vocabulary and also start to alter this um, issue about fluency, avoiding or reducing the, the amount of disfluency because students have to maintain their conversation. Also, you start to discover pronunciation issues, which you can later address, later address. So there's many aspects to focus on, okay, and explore, because while they're testing, you can sit carefully and observe what's going on in your actual classroom. So as I said, you can work on grammar, vocabulary, and fluency, but the question which you probably are asking yourself is how are you going to include pronunciation practice in the classroom? Well, First of all, by doing the testing, it certainly raises awareness. And from that, you can look at aspects and get students to practice it. And also in the testing stage, you can get yourself to provide valuable feedback. But you need to be on top of it. So whatever you teach, you must remember each time so that mistakes aren't made in later courses too, as such. But for pronunciation training, um, this is something you need to think more carefully about. Students may be overwhelmed with other aspects of second language acquisition. Not all learners benefit the same because of aspects such as motivation, exposure, attitude, personality, and their mother tongue. These will affect the, um, the quality of the training sessions for them. For them. Um, and also, um, it depends on how each student conceptualizes the pronunciation training as well, because each of us has a slightly different um, look at how it's used as well. So you have to learn to become more aware of student awareness as well. Um, how finally to describe the auditory quality of sounds that makes sense to learners to capitalize, capitalize on takes time. It's something I'm still learning myself and over the years showing improvement, but you have to understand it does take time to understand the needs of your students and how to explain pronunciation. So suggestions I would say about pronunciations initially is, first of all, introduce it at an appropriate time and at an appropriate level. So it has less impact on aspects such as fluency, confidence, and grammar and vocabulary. Um, also, you need to think of creative ways to integrate the pronunciation training activities into speaking classes so that it relates to oral communication. And from that, um, the training needs to be more effective and so that it focuses on not just the pronunciation, but uses it in the actual speech production and fluency. And also you need to make sure the pronunciation addresses the actual speaking needs so that they can use it in their conversation and also reflects real life conversation rather than just simply drilling shattering language which makes no sense to the students because they won't be able to transfer this onto their own language production so successful integration of prosody training will therefore depend on the teacher's ability to apply unplanned as well as planned speaking and that will take time but time pair practice will give that opportunity to slow down and observe what actually is going on in your classroom so you'll find it, as well as your students, an uncomfortable situation, but you do need to explore this to find out what's going on. So when to focus on pronunciation? Well, I would suggest after the first practice rounds on testing, so students have started to build their fluency and feeling a little bit more confident. Then you start to introduce a particular aspect of pronunciation and get them to practice it for a later test. You could also... Um, work on the idea of providing homework before the lesson that way um, you have materials to work on um, rather than just giving some to feedback on the topic and you can prepare aspects pronunciation beforehand because you've got the homework to to look at before so time pair practice is something i would strongly suggest using the classroom and as i said it's really easy to apply um, without any real additional um, planning as such. Um, questions though, well, there are questions. Um, well, the first one is how are you going to teach pronunciation? And then what are the considerations for teaching pronunciation? And finally, what materials can be useful? Now, these are questions I will address 
in um, later videos as such. But at the moment, just remember to explore and have fun and hopefully getting you better understood or at least your students. Anyway, thank you very much for your time and hopefully um, you can have a look at the videos to see how you can use them. Bye.